Oh yeah, my custom-built retro pie console. So much retro gaming greatness in one sweet package. NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, you name it and I'll play it. I can play all my beloved classics, hook up any controller I want and haul away like an absolute mad lad. You just can't go wrong with this amazing system. Honey, go to something else please, cause I wanna watch some TV now. Ah, uh, fuck piece of mother diarrhea. No, 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 no. You can't stop me. I'm on a freaking mission. I'll just dust off my good old Game Boy. Hmm. Haven't held this one in a while. Wow. Look at this thing. It looks so awesome and so stylish. But, man, that screen is just horrible. How in the world could I play for hours straight on this thing when I was a kid? Another problem is the form factor. My hands are just too big for this ancient brick. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of carpal tunnel syndrome. So, then what? <sighs> ah, the Game Boy Advance. Granted, this black one is not the most sexy looking Game Boy Advance out there, but the screen is a lot better and the grip is perfect. My hands don't get all cramped up and I can play my Game Boy games, my Game Boy Color games and of course my Game Boy Advance games. But then, it's still lacking the possibility of having the amazing NES and SNES games library to reach for. I need my RetroPie console and my TV! Or do I really? I guess we'll see about that. So, what is all this? Well, it's a bunch of stuff. And it's a bunch of stuff that will amount to something that fulfills that need for my RetroPie console without a TV. And if you watch the whole video through, you'll be a witness to that. Pinnacle achievement for mankind. <laughs> oh, Kathy. <laughs> But seriously though, what I'll be doing is building a Freeplay Zero gaming handheld based on a Raspberry Pi Zero and built into a Game Boy Advance shell. But not just that, no. I'll be customizing the GBA shell to reminisce the aesthetics of the classic DMG01 Game Boy. So join me as I build my ultimate handheld retro gaming device step by step. First, we'll have a detailed overview of the parts and tools to be used, just so you'll have a better understanding of the build itself. Next, we'll customize the GBA shell to fit the Freeplay Zero PCB. A very important part will be customizing the screen lens, and later on you'll see why this is so important. After all customization is done, it's time to assemble the Freeplay Zero. And of course, we'll have a closer look at seeing this pinnacle achievement from mankind in action. So, 
I think it's time to get this show on the road. Let's go! I'm not going to go into full detail on all specific parts, I'll just be pointing out the parts and tools in general. For more detailed information about the Freeplay Zero kit, head on over to freeplaytech.com. My Freeplay Zero order came with this neat little business card with a personal thank you note. I really love that. It's such a small gesture, but it's very much appreciated. I'm not the most experienced when it comes to PCBs, but I think they did an outstanding job with this one. It basically includes everything you could think of to build a full-blown functional gaming handheld. Later on we'll use the included GPIO header to solder the Raspberry Pi Zero W to this PCB. The Freeplay Zero kit came with a nice couple of stickers for the GBA shell. And of course the included LCD display. Better be careful with this. These are some small parts, including a drill guide for the X and Y buttons, some button covers, a micro USB converter, the GPIO header and more. Also very important, the batteries. These will fit in the GBA shell battery compartment, so they're pretty easily replaceable, if need be. The Freeplay Zero is designed to be built with the Raspberry Pi Zero or Raspberry Pi Zero W. I've chosen the Raspberry Pi Zero W. They've also released a kit for the CM3 or Compute Module 3, which basically is a Raspberry Pi 3 in a smaller form factor. The Freeplay CM3 kit is a bit more expensive than the Freeplay Zero kit, and for emulating up to the Game Boy Advance and SNES, the Raspberry Pi Zero W will do just fine. This 8GB micro SD card provides more than enough space for me. And of course a power supply is necessary for playing and charging the batteries. A Raspberry Pi can be quite picky with its power supply, so I went for an original power supply. To create a classic DMG01 Game Boy styled Free Play Zero, <laughs> now that's a mouthful, a white GBA shell is a prerequisite. To fit the PCB in the LCD, quite some modification will have to be done. I ordered a black colored button set only for the black D pad, just like the classic Game Boy. Most other buttons will remain grey. Except for the A, B, X and Y buttons, those will be painted magenta. I also ordered a glass screen lens instead of the default plastic screen lens. It's much more durable and since it's completely blank, it allows me to customize it freely. As for the tools, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, I'd say. There are quite some adjustments to be made to the GBA shell so that the Freeplay Zero PCB and other components will fit nicely. But also for that classic Game Boy look that we're going for. We'll start off with the back piece of the shell by permanently removing the small metal cartridge blade because once the build is completed the Raspberry Zero will fill up that space. To allow for enough space for the PCB and the Raspi, we'll cut away some plastic barriers and make sure no sharp edges are left.
You can also do this with a sharp blade, but it can be troublesome and a bit dangerous, so be careful. Next to the battery compartment, there are also some small plastic barriers that need to be removed. The LCD display needs some extra space, so we'll cut away some plastic barriers from the inside of the front piece as well. Don't worry, the building guide on the free Playtech website will give plenty of information on which exact parts you will need to remove. We'll make sure the LCD gets a nice snug fit in the shell, but not too tight, obviously. The L and R buttons on the PCB need some extra room as well, so you guessed it, more plastic removal. For a nice smooth finish we'll use some sandpaper to remove any remaining rough or sharp edges. With the FreePlay Zero kit you get the option to add a X and Y button to the shell. But since I'll be playing SNES games, it's rather mandatory. Therefore the kit includes a nice and handy drill guide to make things a bit easier. With a sharp point or needle we'll mark the drilling holes to make sure the holes are nicely centered. Luckily I have a drill press at home, it's highly recommended for precise drilling like this. Now all plastic modification is out of the way, let's take a look at the Game Boy Start and Select labels. The labels on the GBA shell are embossed which is nice, but we'll have to paint them blue somehow. For paint I'm using enamel paint, often used in scale modeling. It's durable paint and you can buy it in convenient small quantities. I'll be stamping the paint on the embossed label, so to speak, with a simple tool I made. It took me a couple of tries to get it right, but it came out nicely. Onwards to the button labels. In similar fashion the A and B buttons of the classic Game Boy are labeled blue as well. Painting these would require inhuman microscopic painting skills so I recreated the labels in Illustrator. And printed them on transparent decal paper, again often used in scale modeling. Next we'll simply cut out the labels as small as possible. Dip them in water for a few seconds and apply them to the shell. Because of the water you get plenty of time to position the labels. After the decals have completely dried we'll use some microsol. This also is often used in scale modeling to soften the decals and adjust the labels completely to the surface. This is necessary 
since the texture of the GBA shell has a certain roughness to it. It also adds some extra durability. Another adjustment involves the A and B buttons. The GBA buttons have the A and B label debossed in the plastic. The classic Game Boy doesn't have this, so we'll have to remove it somehow. This is simply done by wet sanding the buttons, but we'll have to make sure to finish with at least 1200 grit sandpaper for a nice and smooth surface. Now the buttons are ready for paint. Once again, I'll be using enamel paint. I notice the buttons of the classic Game Boy are often mistaked for being red, but it's actually magenta. Two layers of enamel paint will do just fine. However, for some added durability and a glossy finish, we'll give the buttons a clear gloss finish with a spray can. You'll have to excuse the lack of focus, but I think you can still see the result is pretty decent. Earlier I talked about the importance of the screen lens customization, but why is that? Looking at the classic Game Boy, the grey colored screen lens, the pink and blue lines and the dot matrix line of text are very defining for the Game Boy's look and style. The screen lens for my Freeplay Zero will be very defining for its look and style as well. So we'll be creating a screen lens very similar looking. This blank glass screen lens by Deadpan Robot is perfect for creating a custom one. The fact that it's glass is even better for obvious reasons. First we'll have to come up with a design. In the intro you saw my customized SNES RetroPie console which I named Super Nintemu. So, for this build, I'm going for Nintemu Game Boy. The big question now is, how to transfer this to the glass screen lens? First we'll print this design on transparent adhesive film so we can apply it to the screen lens. To do this, the design will have to be mirrored since the adhesive side of the film will be applied to the lens and you'll be looking at it from the back so to speak. Of course the center needs to be cut out for the display. We'll use the original screen lens underneath the glass lens to make sure the custom design film is centered correctly. It 
it's important both the original and the glass screen lens remain in their position. So we'll both secure them with some simple household tape. And now for the tricky part. Applying and precisely positioning the film to the glass. Okay, nice. Since it's transparent film, you can see through the design. It needs a solid white background to prevent any transparency and for the colors to be correct. We'll use some white adhesive label paper for that and apply it in similar fashion. Then we'll cut away the bleed of the film around the edges. We'll try to keep the protective film in place till the final assembly. And there you have it. Exactly the way I envisioned it, so I'm really happy with this. Now let's put this piece of awesomeness together. We'll start off with a couple of stickers. I'd rather do this now with the shell still unassembled. It makes it a bit easier to do and I don't have to worry about possibly damaging or scratching the front of the Nintendo Game Boy. The glass screen lens will be glued to the shell with some double-sided adhesive tape. The edges are simply cut off using a sharp blade. A very important part that's still left is soldering the GPIO header to the Raspberry Pi Zero W. I asked a friend to do this since he has both a decent soldering iron and soldering skills. I like both, unfortunately. As you can see, he did a great job. So, thanks buddy. Before connecting the Raspi to the PCB, first we'll insert the included mounting stands. These are necessary for the Raspi to be positioned at an angle so that the USB ports will be accessible from the cartridge slot of the GBA shell. Connecting the Raspi to the PCB is solderless. Just push the GPIO header into the PCB socket. Next we'll connect the LCD to the PCB. Honestly, the ribbon cable could use one of those handy plastic clips to push the cable into the connector, but oh well. The buttons and rubber pads need to be placed before we can install the LCD in the PCB except for the added X and Y button caps. Those need to be fitted later on.
The PCB is held by three internal screws, nicely marked on the PCB itself. Here I insert the batteries into the compartment, but later on I notice this makes connecting the batteries to the PCB almost impossible. You'll have to slacken the cables to connect them to the PCB. Putting everything together is a tight fit, so some pressure is needed to squeeze the shell together when tightening the screws one by one. In case you're wondering, of course I did a couple of test runs of my Nintendo Game Boy before putting the whole thing together. Last, but most definitely not least, putting the screen lens into place. Talk about the icing on the cake. It's done! The Nintendo U Game Boy is finished! What a fantastic little machine! To be honest though, I haven't had the chance to play a lot with it because at this point I spend most of my time making this video. But the little time I did spend with it, yeah, it's great. At the start of the video, I promised a closer look at seeing this pinnacle achievement for mankind in action. And don't worry, don't worry. I'll show you in a minute. I do feel I have to point out that I didn't show anything concerning the software. The reason why is because there are other videos out there covering that and I feel like they do a way better job than I would. Just know that Freeplay Tech offers a custom retro by image completely compatible with the Freeplay Zero. All right then. It's time to end this little adventure. I seriously hope you enjoyed it, I know I did. Now I can finally play all my classics when I want and I can play them anywhere I want, literally anywhere. Check it out and thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, stay retro and take care.